Nigeria is a leading oil and gas producer in Africa with vast resources so significant she would have been a member of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, for 52 years by July the 12th, 2023. But exploration and production is one thing, refining is another. To transform crude oil to products principal for human use, such as petrol, kerosene, LPG, diesel fuel, and what have you. Even a perfunctory look at Nigeria's oil and gas history will reveal the challenges in the sector over the decades, making private sector investment a long-touted imperative for industrial growth. Enter Dangote Oil Refinery, a 650,000 barrel per day integrated refinery that has joined the global playing fields. That's our focus on Special Report. Before now, Nigeria was a paradox, being one of the world's largest producers and exporters of crude oil, and yet one of the biggest importers of refined products. Trillions of Naira is spent every year in subsidy claims for oil marketers. Not to talk of immeasurable man-hours lost each time there is real or artificial scarcity of fuel. But now, the first of its kind integrated oil refinery project will resolve this paradox with its longest single train refinery in the world. The Dangote Group, which focuses on provision of local value-added production and services that meets the needs of the African population, approached the Central Bank of Nigeria to indicate interest to invest in refining crude oil so as to facilitate the production of petrochemicals, fertilizer and fuel. Today, the Dangote Oil Refinery project, which is valued at $14 billion, with a tantalizing target to refine 650,000 barrels of crude oil per day. At the area of the refinery, that is the area of the plot plan, uh, refinery plot is uh, 2,135 hectares. It has various process units and uh, then dispatch facilities. Uh, it has its own captive power plant, uh, sulfur uh, dispatch facilities. It has a flare unit. Uh, it is a uh, self-sufficient refinery that produces the power uh, within the refinery, what is the power consumption required. This refinery will produce gasoline, diesel, aviation fuel, household kerosene, slurry as raw material for carbon black, as well as 2.8 million metric tons per annum of urea and ammonia. A combined refining capacity of Nigeria's three refineries comprising Port Harcourt, Kaduna and Wari is put at 445,000 barrels per day. In the recent past, it has produced about 6 million liters daily for premium moto spirit. This refinery will refine 650,000 barrels per day with yields of 55.2 million liters of PMS, 3.4 million liters of diesel, the high-end Euro 5, and 8.8 .8 million liters of aviation jet fuel daily. At 55.2 million liters of PMS, Nigeria's daily consumption of 40 million liters is already taken care of. In Dangote Group, we like challenging things and we like to make sure that we do things where we'll make our country proud and also self-sufficient. So uh, once we do this, Nigeria will never ever import any oil at all. Uh, no petroleum products, zero, you know, will meet up the full capacity. And uh, we've taken up a land that will allow us to grow three times. You know, so we have plans of also further growth. But the challenges, I think, will uh, be able to surmount most of them because, number one, we are a local domesticated refinery. Most of the logistics cost will not be there. And then we don't have to pile up a lot of petroleum products, you know, in stock because the refinery is there, it's working. Obviously, yes, maybe we'll have about 15, 20 days of reserves. After months of work on site, the dredging has covered a major portion, although heavy-duty work is ongoing. Can I 
Alibaba. If you see the exports from Nigeria to US, it has completely collapsed. It was one of our biggest markets. Now the export to US has collapsed. And the country has been even struggling to get uh, importers for the light oil. The US has a lot of refineries designed to handle light oil. In most of the other parts of the world, to maximize the profits, they started going for heavier, dirtier, high sulfur crude because they were all available cheap. So the refineries were designed to handle that so they could maximize the profits. So now when the, our primary market collapsed, we have been even struggling to get enough demand to export this crude. And that is why if you see the Nigerian crowd, uh, crude, even the prices have been coming down. So we are looking for a market now instead of commanding a premium and for our commodity which is the oil and we are still continuing to import the finished product. So this refinery will answer all the problems. The growth potential and trajectory impact is immeasurable. The whole state, Lagos, is also positioning itself to be a part of history. Dangote's intervention alone is going to change the entire economy of the Lagos East, as we see it today. And you see, if you now combine that with the activities going on inside the free trade zone, the proposed airport and the deep sea port, it's, it's going to end up in a, in a massive transformation of that sector. But that is not only the benefit that Lagos will get. You see, if you see the impact of um, tank farms, in Apapa, with respect to all the trailers coming from all over the nation and, you know, massing inside the Apapa, it has almost collapsed the economy of Apapa. And that is not going to be sustained. And that is happening because we are bringing all the petroleum products that we are using in the country from outside. So if Dangote can produce from here, then there will be no, 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 no motivation to keep building more tank farms in, in Apapa. And I think what I see is, a lot of them will now be fading away gradually, and then you see our economy coming back again. So for us, it's going to be multiple benefits to the states in terms of income, in terms of um, GDP, in terms of employment, in terms of helping us to resolve the APAPA economic challenge, in terms of traffic. Because the architecture there, as it's going on now, a lot of impact assessments are being tied it up with respect to transportation impact assessment, environmental impact assessment, because we don't want what happened in Apapa to also happen in a, in a virtual on account of Dangote's activities. And mind you, that place is not within town. So, so if there are vehicles coming in to take the products and take to other parts of the country, you just pass along the Ekwe corridor and then you are in Ogun State, and you can go to Ore, you can go to the northern part of Nigeria. Unlike if you were in Napapa, you still have to pass through the Lagos Island, the Lagos mainland, Oshili, until you get out of town. The impact of the Dangote oil refinery project on the Nigerian economy will be both massive and monumental. Well, the impact will be heavy, you know, to start with. First of all, there won't be any shortage anymore. And then, you know, money will not be tied down. You don't have to go and uh, import three, four months stock because, you know, we have the refinery is working. Uh, we have massive storage, uh, you know, which I think it is, uh, you know, it will, you know, uh, you know, assist in the supply chain. Uh, there's something that which people don't normally, you know, if you go around, most of uh, outside Lagos or Ogun, Majority of the filling stations, you see that yes, there's filling station, but there's no activity. Uh, you know, actually, I didn't know this until when we were driving in Kaduna with Bill Gates uh, in January, and he said that this is the first, this is the only country that he has seen filling station that is not working. You know, you see that yes, there is a filling station, there are people there, but no fuel. This will not happen. Anybody who opens a filling station will have something to sell. So can you imagine the thousands of filling stations that we have? Even if there are only five people each, it's a massive number of jobs that we'll create because we'll make the product available. Uh, you don't have to buy what you don't need. 
you only buy when you need it. So it is going to open the market dramatically. You know, I mean, the uh, the economic activities that we're going to create will be enormous. And then you have the polypropylene for ethylene, then you have aviation fuel, you have kerosene, you have, uh, you know, uh, a bit of uh, low fuel oil, you have uh, gasoline, which is PMS, and then you have diesel. And the HGO that you're going to have is not the normal one that we're importing today. The one we're importing today is Euro 3. But we are starting from what has just been introduced today in Europe, which is Euro 5. It's the highest, high end. high end. So all these vehicles that are, you know, buying bad diesel, uh, putting into their vehicles, having a knocked engine, it's just not going to happen. So it will create a lot of economic value. Let me give you an example. During construction alone, we are going to have 42,000 workers, at least. So it's an enormous, giant stride that we're making. I mean, we're investing in one single location now. It's going to get up to about $14 billion. The refinery, the petrochemical, the fertilizer. And then Lagos will really become an industrial hub because what we are investing, if you add the entire uh, industries in Nigeria, they are not up to what we are putting up there. So it's a massive uh, expansion. It's the commissioning of this largest kind of refinery in the world, so it has to draw an array of guests that came calling. The president is here at this plant and his arrival signals the start of the event. A proud moment it is for the pioneer once again, Alaji Aliko Dangote. And to clear all doubt regarding the large event, he assures that the plant will refine crude oil and will produce PMS and other petroleum products into the Nigerian market.
for the numbers. One of the people who saw the financial and economic benefits of the plan says Nigeria will be amazed at what development it will bring to the nation. Your Excellencies, as you all are aware, this complex comprises a refinery, a petrochemical plant, a urea and fertilizer plant, and a subsea pipeline project. This petrochemical facility has a capacity to produce 900,000 metric tons of polypropylene per annum, while urea will be able to produce 3 million metric tons urea annually. Its, plastic, its flagship project, for which we are here today, the Dangote Refinery, which has the capacity to produce 650,000 barrels of crude per day, is the largest single train in the world. Given its pro pro processing capacity, this refinery is more than able to meet all of Nigeria's domestic fuel consumption, whilst the excess production will be available for export. This will not only aid our domestic production needs, but also help in generating export revenue for our country. This refinery is designed to process not only bony light grade of crude oil, but also process a wide range of other crude streams, including many from Africa, some Mid-Eastern mid streams, and the U.S. bony light. Your Excellency, in September 2013, when Alaji Dangote announced his plans for a refinery, it was estimated to cost just about $9 billion. By 2017, when Dangote Group commenced this project, the project had escalated, and due to an array of factors, the project was eventually completed today at a total cost of $18.5 billion with a contribution of 50% equity investment by Dangote and 50% debt finance by our banks. I must thank you for your astute vision to ensure that Nigeria produces what we consume and that we consume what we produce, and this is one. This refinery and petrochemical project is a testament to your vision for Nigeria. It shows that Regardless of what the world stands or the world thinks, Nigeria can be self-sufficient in all products that we consume and at the same time export our excess output to the rest of the world. This project is located in Lagos, but it could have been elsewhere. This speaks volumes, says the host governor. It's about the opportunity this has provided for all the youth and young people of our country. It's about the fact that we can say to them that what these three men, uh, Mr. President, Alaji Dangote, and our incoming president have done and will continue to do is about their future. It's about providing opportunity for them because the over 150,000 or so direct and indirect jobs that will be created are not for 65-year-old and not for 55-year-old. They are jobs for our youth, our young leaders that are in their 20s and in their 30s. And for them to believe that indeed Nigeria is a place for them. Nigeria considers them as an important and a veritable tool in developing and ensuring that the very best is always at us. I want to thank you all very much for coming, and I want to pray that as Aliko Dangote has done this, the conversation is how many Dangotes are we going to build? From Port Harcourt to Enugum, from Sokoto to Maiduguri, from Lagos, to Abuja, we need to replicate the likes of Aliko Dangote. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of you. President Buhari gives a proud speech about Nigeria providing to Africa and the world. I inform that this complex has the capacity to process 650,000 barrels a day of crude, which will enable our country to achieve self-sufficiency in refined products and even have some surplus for export. This clearly makes this event a notable milestone for our economy and a game changer for the downstream petroleum products market.
not only in Nigeria, but the entire African continent. I am aware that this is not the first time the Dongote group and the Aliyeko Dongote leadership is putting Nigeria on the global map through his bold, visionary, and courageous investments in key industries. The group has helped to transform our economy from heavy import dependence to a net exporter in some critical industries, including cement and fertilizer. Our, our economy, which has been stressed for many decades by huge deficits in economic infrastructure, and over a decade of insurgency, has also been severely impacted by several external crises including the global financial crisis, the collapse of oil prices, the coronavirus pandemic, and the Russia-Ukraine war. The consequences of these challenges constitute a severe strain on our economy, limiting government's ability to provide basic infrastructure without resorting to huge borrowings. Lending his voice is the Vice President. Today ranks without doubt as one of the greatest days in the contemporary annals of our nation's history, as we witness the commissioning of the Dangote Refinery and Petrochemicals Company. Given the huge prospects of this gigantic project, in reversing Nigeria's near Africa's reliance on imported petroleum products, in generating the much needed foreign exchange, in generating a humongous quantum of jobs and in stabilizing the Naira, it is safe to say that the Dangote refinery will be the most consequential single project to come on stream in recent times and is bound to have a huge impact on the growth and development of our economy and positively influence the life and well being of our people. I will therefore, like on behalf of the President elect. Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu, to heartily commend and congratulate Al Haji Aliko Dangote and the Dangote Group for not only ambition in this significant project, but for their courage, resilience, and staying power in bringing this outstanding edifice to fruition. Nigeria, and indeed Africa, is proud of you, Al Haji Aliko Dangote. Let me use this opportunity to also praise all the Nigerian entrepreneurs who have already embarked on similar projects following Dangote's shining example and call on others to also follow suit. At the end, former President Muhammad Buhari commissions the plant and takes a tour with some select individuals. For the record, the quality of PMS it will produce is a Euro 5 quality known to be one of the best in the world. As of date, it will also export some, in addition to meeting the economic requirements of the nation. Clearly a game changer for the oil and gas sector in Nigeria. Years from today, it's anticipated that the Dangote oil refinery would have long had an indelible impact on Nigeria's oil and gas industry for the good of all Nigerians and indeed even Africa at large. For special report, I'm Olumide Mukoli.